Hey folks, and welcome to CarStars' 10 Wild Facts About Harry's 87 Chevy Suburban in the 1997 film, Dante's Peak. Fact number one. There were initially four different 1987 Chevrolet Suburban V10 4x4 models customized by the well-known Cinema Vehicle Services, aka CVS Group, used throughout the movie to portray Harry's geological expedition-themed customized SUV. One was used as the hero vehicle for the close-up and actor-driven scenes, while others were used for specific purposes such as for certain stunts or rigged up as camera vehicles. Most of these customized 4x4 Suburbans survived the film, yet some weren't so lucky. But we'll get into further details, so stay tuned to find out more. Fact number two. The seventh generation Suburbans used in the film were equipped with the 350 V8 engine option, outputting approximately 210 net horsepower to a 4-speed 700R4 automatic transmission. Sure, that might not sound like all that much power for moving around an over 6,000 pound vehicle, but at least these engines put out a decent amount of torque to make up for it. There was also a 454 big block engine available for the seventh generation Suburban as well, in case folks needed a bit more pulling power in their rig. Fact number three. Many may be wondering what the V10 part of this Suburban's model name is all about, since it doesn't have anything to do with the engine, as there certainly wasn't a 10-cylinder engine option for GM vehicles then, or even now for that matter. Despite both Ford and Chrysler did have some V10 engine model vehicles on the competing market. Well, in 1987, Chevrolet underwent a nomenclature shift for their trucks and SUVs. Previously, they used the K-Series, K10, K20, K30, for four-wheel drive trucks and the C-Series, C10, C20, C30, for two-wheel drive trucks. However, they transitioned to the V-Series, V10, V20, V30, for four-wheel drive models and the R-Series, R10, R20, R30, for two-wheel drive models. This change extended to models like the Suburban, Blazer, GMC Sierra, and GMC Jimmy. The VNR designations persisted for five years, so any Chevy truck or SUV produced between 1987 and 1991 would bear these labels. Simultaneously, in 1989, GM adopted the more modern naming convention of 1500, 2500, 3500 as well, technically rendering trucks from 1989, 1990, or 1991 as V1500, V2500, V3500, or R1500, R2500, R3500 models. Phew, what a mouthful. Thanks a lot, GM. Fact number four. The Suburban, interestingly enough, is not only Chevrolet's longest running production model, but is also one of the oldest American vehicle models still produced today, dating all the way back to 1934. Yep, that predates any other production model four-door 4x4 SUV out there, even the original Jeep. Over the years, the Suburban evolved through various generations, adapting to changing times and consumer needs. In 1999, the 12th generation solidified its status as the longest running continuous nameplate in automotive history. Fast forward to the present day, the latest 2025 model Suburban combines cutting edge infotainment systems, hybrid powertrains, and autonomous driving features. Yet, beneath the sleek lines and digital displays, it remains true to its heritage, a reliable, cavernous vehicle that bridges generations and memories. In summary, the Chevrolet Suburban's journey, from its humble beginnings as a utilitarian workhorse to its current embodiment of modern luxury, reflects the ever-evolving American automotive landscape where tradition meets innovation. Fact number five. Some GM models of the 80s era had military use release vehicles under a program called the Commercial Utility Cargo Vehicle, or CUCV program. Although this program did output a military version of the Chevy Blazer of the time, which was referred to as the M1009, they didn't directly produce a military Suburban model. However, it did become a common aftermarket practice to convert Suburbans of this generation into essentially an unofficial CUCV Suburban, using the needed parts to do so from the CUCV Blazer. Some of these non-civilian release parts borrowed from the M1009 would include parts such as the 6.2 liter diesel engine, brush guard, the 24 volt electrical system, wheels, tires, CDR system, transfer case, and so forth. There are still a few of these converted to military spec 7th generation Suburbans out there today, and most were purchased by civilians at military surplus auctions, such as this one here, but these are quite rare now compared to the more common M1009 model. 
There were, however, some later generation official military version Suburbans when the CUCV2 and LSSV programs were later established, such as this 1994 model here. Fact number six. As most vehicle enthusiasts would agree, it was the aftermarket accessories that made Harry's Suburban stand out to us predominantly. So let's delve into identifying some of these great aftermarket parts now. At the front, we have a worn combo kit brush guard with a T-Max number 1100 winch attached and a Safari brand snorkel model number SS81HF. Up top, we see a Confer brand roof rack and a car brand light bar. Out back, we have a Valley slash Hickey brand rear tire carrier and she's riding on a set of 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler MT tires all around. The wheels and GM paint color, which is GM red paint code number 514, are factory items, however. Fact number seven. There were many scale model vehicles and even some full CGI vehicle moments used in this film, as you can see here from the small models used for the collapsing on-ramp and bridge scenes in the movie. However, all the best stunts involving the Suburban were indeed performed with the real full-scale Suburbans piloted by actual stuntmen. Probably the most memorable stunt involving the Suburban was the very cool to watch river crossing scene. On the first try, they attempted this stunt with one of the prepped stunt Suburbans just trying a run across the river under its own power only. However, that attempt failed as the strong river currents actually rolled over and totaled that Suburban. This was the only Suburban of the four built that was destroyed in the creation of the film, so they did end up having to assist one of the other stunt Suburbans across the river via cables to get the shot. They also had a crane-carried platform with one of the camera rig Suburbans on it that they lowered into the river to get the necessary interior shots of the water entering the vehicle with the actors inside, which was a pretty nifty idea and certainly a lot safer for the actors. Fact number eight. As for replicas of the Dante's Peak Suburban, there have been quite a few of them spotted out there over the years. It is certainly a really cool expedition slash exploration vehicle inspired setup so it makes sense that many would like to have a likeness of it for their own as the inspiration that led to this fine replica here and many others out there as well. However, there is one replica in particular that became quite well known about a decade ago, and the reason for that is due to the group who built it actually sought out some of the original creators of the film to help them create it in effort to make it as accurate as possible. This is the same replica Suburban that would show up occasionally at car shows in the small town of Wallace, Idaho, which is actually the real town that portrayed the fictional Dante's Peak for the film. However, the dedicated Facebook group behind this replica has been inactive for a few years now, and its dedicated website has also been down for about the same time, so I'm not sure what happened there. Fact number nine. As for what happened to the original movie Suburbans, well, as previously mentioned, one was totaled in the river during the film's production. Another one was sent overseas to the Universal Studios Beijing Experience theme park for promotional purposes, and apparently it never returned as they somehow lost track of its whereabouts over there, so that one is pretty much written off as well. The other remaining two, one Hero Suburban and one Stunt Suburban, were kept by CVS for a few years, but were then sold off to the public via eBay auctions. The last time one of these screen-used Suburbans surfaced in the public eye was back in 2017 when a teenager and his dad purchased it from someone off of Craigslist in the Burlington Junction, Missouri area. Fact number 10. Looking into scale model options, there unfortunately wasn't any official merchandise from this movie, most likely due to it not being as big of a hit as the many other disaster movies of the mid-90s. Worse yet, there are also no 7th generation Suburban model kits out there by any brand at present. Heck, there aren't even any same body style blazers available to customize into a Suburban either on the present retail market, which I find odd considering how popular both of these production Chevrolet models are today. So, that really only leaves a single option that I can find anyways for a scale 7th generation Suburban, which is this 164 scale diecast model 87 Suburban from Greenlight. Although I haven't seen anyone do it yet, it would be pretty cool if someone customized one of these into a Dante's Peak Suburban replica. These green light models typically go for around the $30 mark, and I will put a link in the description below to where you can get it for those interested. And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I have recently created my own diecast car channel named Show and Tell Diecast that I display and detail my diecast models that I now add videos to weekly also. I will include a link to the new channel in the video description below as well for those interested. Well, there you have it folks. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time.